Christ. You can Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. I am glad for the Spirit of God that I can feel right now. today. Oh, yes. Yeah. This very moment. This moment. You know, Brother Hamby was talking about this could be your last service. If this moment were our last moment right here, come on. I think this would be a good place to leave earth from. Oh, yes. The house of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's why right. we come together to feel his touch, to feel his guiding power, to feel his spirit. Oh, yes. To, to be reaffirmed that he is alive and well. Yes, he is. I mean, I've heard for years and years from various unbelievers that God is dead, but there never was a God. Oh, my. I'll tell you what, they've come too late to tell me that. Too late. That's right. Too late to tell me that. That's right. You come too late to tell me that the Holy Ghost is not for me. Hallelujah. You can not believe all you want, but I am glad that I am a living testimonial that there is yes, a Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. There is a God. oh, yes, sir. And he is with us. Always. He is with us always. Even to the end of the earth. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Even to the end of the earth. And I am so thankful that I have someone to fall back on. Absolutely. That in my, oh, in my oh, stupidity and carelessness and right. humanity, yeah. I make these dumb mistakes. Right. Yes, but I, all I have to do yes, is Lord. look upward and say, Lord, yes. forgive me. Yeah. Yes. Give me another Amen. chance. One more chance. Yeah. And he, he looks at me with his loving grace and his loving eyes. Yes. And says, do better, my son. Yes. I'm with you. I'm yes. still with you. Right. Woo! I still love you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I still appreciate you. I'm going to help you any way I can. Yes. I know you're going to stumble. I know you're going to stumble. Yes. But when you do, just reach up and there'll be another hand that grabs. Right. Oh, my Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord. oh yes. I'm so glad. Lord. I can imagine Hallelujah. living in this world without a belief in and knowing God. Right, amen. You know, I know with uh, Charles Darwin is uh, is uh, anathema for many people because of his his uh, uh, writings he about, wrote about evolution and things like this. I've read all of his books, and in a lot of ways he was a very amazing person. But one thing that struck me when I read the uh, the origin of the species. Charles Darwin traveled many er many around the world. He was a he was a minister for many years, and he became a scientist. But anyway, he was saying that what he did not understand. He talked about evolution and all the other stuff that you know we don't agree with and understand. But I thought the interesting thing was that he said that the strange thing that I do not understand about every civilization and group I've ever run across, they always worship something. Right. There's a there's a tribe in New Guinea that worships a god that looks like an airplane. And the reason was the reason was during World War II, the, the planes was they, there was there was battles took that pl took place on the islands of New Guinea, and the planes would come over and drop all these supplies to the soldiers. But many times they landed back in the jungles and things like this, and these these natives would find this food and find these tools and things like this. And all they knew in their ignorance was that it came from this flying thing that flew and they, they built images of that airplane. Wow. And they worshiped that, that image wow. of an airplane. My mom. But he said that the, the, the amazing thing was that every group he talked to that he would analyze, they always worshiped something. And you know, I think the reason for that is God puts into our heart, right? Yep. Somehow, a, a underlying belief, right, that there's got to be something besides just us. Yes, right. sir. There's got to be a supreme yes. being somewhere. Right. Oh yes. Right. Yes. And in our in the world's ignorance, we, we they they worship airplanes, they worship images, and they yeah. worship all these other creatures <laughs> and, 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 and dragons, and you you name it. Somewhere, somebody worships it. Sure. You know. But I'm glad I worship the one true Holy God. God. Oh, yes. 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 The one who is the right all. Yes. Amen. He's Our in us. Is. And he keeps us and guides us today. Our Savior. I'm so thankful. Amen. I, I, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I am. Thank yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me ask you this. If you kind of switch gears here a little bit. 
if we if you have been in service uh, if you're in church for several years for, for, for a while anyway have you uh are there any services that you look back at and remember for a special reason mm -hmm. that god has touched you in a special way in that service yes. and I, in, yes. in my previous lessons i've talked about some services that i that i was in that yes. that, that that it was special to me yes it was special to me okay those 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 mileposts that we take in our spiritual walk with god yes, that we look back and we say it may be tough now, but I remember that time when he touched me. Oh, yes. 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 I know he is still here. Yeah. I know he is still here. Right. You know, the, uh, and it, it, if you were here last Sunday, if you were here last Sunday, to me, last Sunday was a special day. You know, and, and I realize it, it you know, it, it, every, it can be special for me and not for you and special for you and not for me. God works in a strange way sometimes, in, in His own particular way to give you what you need. Okay. Yes. And and you know, last Sunday we we it it, it was an ordinary service. I don't I don't want to use I guess that's probably not the proper word because we felt the spirit. We were singing and things like this, and and, and then we began to sing. I see a crimson stream of blood. Yes. Yes. You yes. know and. Somehow I felt a stirring as we begin to sing oh, yes. that song. Yes. And then Brother, Brother Smith came up here to the pulpit and he read the verses. He read them slowly and somehow those words began to sink in. Yes. And, and I felt a, a, a powerful touch. Yes. Oh, God. God. Thank you, yes. Jesus. That, that I see a crimson stream of blood. Yes. yes. And it flows from Calvary. They talk on Calvary's hill of sorrow. Yes. yes sir. You know what? For us, that hill of sorrow became a hill of victory. Yes. Right. It, it, it became it, a hill of, of, of salvation. Yes. yes. Of remission yes. of sin. All the, the, what was what at one time was a place of tragedy, a place, a place of sadness. Yes. You know, they in those days they that there really was a hill of sorrow. And that's where they that's where they crucified their their criminals. Yes. Uh, it was not a happy place. You didn't no, go no. you didn't take your kids there to play. Right. A terrible place. Right. And yet that place that once was a hill of sorrow has become a hill of victory for us. Yes. And I'm sorry, but when I hear that song, I'm always affected. Me right. too. By what he may he has what, done. Yes, yes, Lord. What he has done for us. Yes, oh, yes. And because yes. of that, you know, it, I, I couldn't get it out of my mind. This week, I see a crimson stream of blood. Oh, yes, right. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about, I guess, the, I'll give you a title The Crimson Thread. Oh, yes, wow. The Crimson yes. Thread. I, I, I know that I may be a crimson thread in the Maybe just simplify that. Say, life is in the blood. Right. Life is in the Amen. blood. That's it. Yes. Yes. I know we, when I talk about the crimson thread, if you're a, a biblical scholar, you've read, you probably think, well, he's going to talk about Rahab. Mm -hmm. And and we talked about Rahab, I think, last week. Yes. That she put out the crimson when, you know, when the spies, they told her, when we invade the city, if you put out that crimson thread out your window, we will right. protect you and your family. Right. Right. Amen. It was a mark of salvation. Right. Yes. A mark right. of salvation. Right. A, a saving of that particular family. I have a, just a few scriptures I'd like to read for you. They're in Romans, the fifth chapter, and the 14th to the 21st verse. <clears throat> Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come right but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be dead much more the grace of god and the grace the gift by grace which is by one man jesus christ hath abounded unto many yes and not as if not as it was by one that sinned so as a gift but the judgment was by one to condemnation but the free gift, the free gift, is of many offenses unto justification. Yes. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, 
Much more shall they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Yes. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even uh -huh. so by the righteousness of one, yes. the free gift yes. came upon all men yes. unto Amen. justification of life. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, Adam yes. sinned. Yes. So by the obedience of one yes. shall many be made righteous. Made righteous. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. Amen. Amen. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. The law would still say, you sin. Yes. You've got to pay the consequence. Yes. But where sin abounded, yes. grace did much more. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen. That as, by, as, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reigned through the righteousness unto, the, unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Unto the reading of the word, can you say amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, but I, you have to read it about five times to kind of figure out what's going on right sometimes. And I would like to read a New Living Translation amen. to you. The, uh, I'm not, I don't use other translations very often. When I read in the message, in the message it says, in my father's house are many rooms. I have gone to, rep to prepare a room for you. That's what I took the message and just, okay. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine, can imagine if that were true, going to heaven and you check in and you say, my name is Robert Downing. Yes, Robert Downing. Thank you. Welcome to heaven. Here's your key. Yeah. Third floor, room 3726. You can't miss it. I'm, I'm looking forward to a little more than that. Yes. You know, Absolutely. You know, I, I, yes. I, I, don't, I don't want to be greedy, but a, a, a mansion sounds a little more, you know, a little better. My I father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I go to prepare a place for you. A Amen. mansion for you. Amen. But in the New Living Translation, let me read that one for you. <clears throat> for a second. Bless him, Jesus. You know, I have to apologize for getting a little emotional time sometimes. But uh, right. when we were kids, when Sister Shirley and I were kids, and I don't know who this was, maybe some of the older folk might remember, but there was a minister who taught at Texas Bible College. And he used to come and speak to the youth at our church and various other places. And all the kids, I'm sure out of respect, <laughs> they called him Brother Jeremiah because he was the weeping prophet. Okay. Amen. He could not preach a sermon without crying. Yes. yes. Brother Tipton. You know, who was that? Brother Tipton from Mississippi. Does that right? Could be. He very well could be. I don't remember his name. But you know, but I know this, what he when he did preach and when he did cry, cry. It affected everyone. I mean, he, yes, had, was, he, had, he had a reason. Yes, sir. I mean, he didn't cry out of sadness. He cried out of gratitude and yes. joy right. and happiness. Right. Anyway, Thank you, the Lord. New Living Translation. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God, even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness, for all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God yes. and new life for everyone. Right. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, yes. many will be made righteous. Amen. Yes. Amen. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. Yes. But as people sinned more and more, yes. God's wonderful grace became more and more abundant. Yes. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
Yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so thankful for that promise. Yes, indeed. Amen. Yes, indeed. Amen. The blood, blood is valuable. Yes. If you don't think so, just lose some of your blood and see how you have it. Right. Amen. Amen. It's, you know, it's interesting that in this in this modern age that that you know we have artificial hearts, artificial kidneys, and most of the vital organs of the body can be bypassed. Brother Hamby will tell you, and I've been through the process myself, that when you have open heart surgery, they actually kill you. Right. They stop your heart. Right. Now they right. have a machine that bypasses your heart, that, that pumps the blood. Yes. yes. You know, but your heart is stopped. Heart lung machine. And then, and then once they get everything patched up and fixed, they give your heart a shock, right. a shock, oh my. Yes. and it starts beating again. Right. But for a while there, your heart is not beating at all. It's kind mm -hmm. of a spooky feeling when you think right. that. I mean, I'm, I'm you're scared. If I were a, if I were what I say, let that current be just right. Be just yeah. right. <laughs> Please get that heart yes. get that heart going. Oh, yes. My my. And we can. And I thought it was interesting. I read not too long oh. ago that you know I was talking about they can replace the organs. They're even they won't be replacing brains, but. You know, they, they are experimenting, you know, they can now you tell you, and I'm not an expert, they can tell you where the, where the, where the memory section of the brain is, where the hearing section, where the cognitive section is, where all of it, and they can use electrodes, right. and they can, they can stimulate those areas. And they're working now with Alzheimer's patients, patients with, uh, patients with dementia and things like this, and they, 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 they with the experiment, they've actually removed the skull, and attach electrodes oh and settle the, the palsy. They, they, can, they can stop palsy by stimulating parts of the brain. Everything can be replaced except blood. Right. Now you get, you get a blood transfusion, but that's blood for blood. But as far right. as having an artificial blood of some sort, there is no such thing. Right. You either have blood or you don't, you know. And so, and the Bible tells us in Leviticus that the life is in the blood, right? Yes, sir. Amen. We have lots of blood terms in our conversation. You know, if you're passionate, temper, or temperate, or temperamental, we can say you're hot-blooded. You know, if you have kin, we say they are our blood relatives. You know, if we, if 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 you if you come down, if you descend from nobility, you're blue-blooded. You know, if you have a lot of anger, you yes. have bad blood. You know, if you're talking about your relatives, you know, you love them more than others. Blood is thicker than water. You know? <laughs> To have someone's blood on your hands, so if you have someone's blood on your hands, that means you're responsible for someone's death. Yes. If you spill blood, you kill someone. If your blood boils, if your blood boils, what's that mean? It means you're upset, <laughs> you're angry. Right. Okay. What if your blood runs cold? You have, you're afraid. All that your blood, even though we, it, blood isn't a popular subject in churches nowadays, but there is a there is a Scarlet thread that yes. runs throughout the scriptures. Yes, there is. As far as blood, perhaps maybe because of the because of the value of blood. You know, if you if you if you, if you accidentally amputate your hand while you're some bad accident, yes. they don't go trying to save the hand. They will, but the first thing you have to do is stop the blood. Yes. Right. Because you lose your blood, you die. Okay, so maybe that's the reason that God chose blood as the as the currency of redemption. Because it, it, it means so much, so valuable to other uh, to us. Every other currency can change value. Right. Can change value. You know, as far as dollars and cents, you know, it, uh, a few years ago, a German mark, a German dollar, was worth about roughly a dollar when it was really strong. If that were true today, I would be a billionaire, because I have some German currency that I, that I got it when I was in Europe. I have a one billion mark bill and a hundred million mark bill that probably today is worth about a dollar and a quarter. <laughs> so, you know, because it has no value. At one time it had a lot of value, right. but now it's worthless. But blood is not that way. Blood is precious. Blood Amen. is always precious. Amen. Now in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament there was always constant reminders of blood. In the law books, there's 613 commandments for the for the Israelites. I right. read most of them in the last couple of months because I'm starting. In, I'm gonna go from Genesis to Revelation. Just go. 
Yes. One chapter right after the other. Awesome. And and I'll tell you what. The the in, in the sacrifices and all the requirements yes. for blood and things like you know they didn't just mm -hmm. sacrifice an animal. Right. They didn't just sacrifice an animal. They took the kidneys and burnt them. Yes. They took they took pieces and did mm -hmm. this yes, and the other one. They took the when they sacrificed they took the blood of the animal right. and and they would dip it the priest yes. would dip his finger in it and he put some on Aaron's right ear yes, on right. his right thumb um, and on yes. his right toe. Right. Amen. I, I don't know the symbolism of that, but anyway, mm -hmm. you know, blood, I mean, the, the sacrifices were, you know, and, and all of, of all those commandments, 222 refer to the sacrifices, how to perform the sacrifices. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Israel shed blood in its defeats to atone. God allowed them to suffer because of their failures to follow him. Yes. Sometimes Israel shed it other animal creatures' blood, other people's blood, because they had, they had the the other nations had fought against Israel, and God was on Israel's side. Yes, amen. The shedding of blood began, of course, we know, with with Adam and Eve. The Bible tells us that God took God took skins, right, and made clothing for for Adam yes. and Eve. Yes, yes. Right. talking about, about Rahab. Right. And in, in the days of Moses, the sacrifices of the Passover, they had their they found they they they, they had the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. They've been to all these sacrifices for all the sins that people had done the previous year. I think it's interesting, though, that when they did these sacrifices, their sins were not forgiven. They were just kind of rolled forward. Right. Yeah. Another year. Right. Another year. They were rolled forward. All these sacrifices could not could not reconcile right. the not sins that, that man had God that right. man had done for God. But they were shown. They served as a pattern. Right. For us to look for it, for us to abide by today, un until that day when the ultimate sacrifice right. was going to be made. Yes. Now, the blood of Jesus Christ. I heard a preacher preach one time, or a, a preacher one time, and he mentioned, he said, the blood of Jesus Christ is a super detergent. Yes. And when you think about it, it is. Right. Right. Yes, you know, we have Tide, and we have all the other things that keep clean our clothes, allegedly, anyway. They won't clean my white socks, but still they clean. You know, they, they're supposed to clean. But 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 God's his I mean Jesus' blood offers redemption, mm -hmm. salvation, yes, yes. healing, yes, all yes. these things that, yes. that we look for today. Oh, but yes. also yes. forgiveness to the point that not only are we forgiven, but the Bible tells us that once we are forgiven, it's as if those sins never happened. Never have. That's right. Exactly. Forgetfulness, forgetfulness is talked exactly. about. Amen. In Ephesians 1 17, excuse me, 1 and 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, yes. the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Yes. 1 Peter 1, 18, 1 and 18. For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, yes. but from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, yes. as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Yes. Right. Yes. Hebrews 9, 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, right. he entered in once into the holy place, yes. having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal redemption for us. Yes. For if by the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkled the, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the puring of the flesh, how much more? Yes. How much more? Yes. Shall the Amen. blood of Christ, yes, who through the eternal Spirit offered Amen. Himself Hallelujah. without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works Hallelujah. to the serving of the living God? Amen. Amen. Jesus. One more. Matthew 28, 26, 28. This is the Lord Himself at the Last Supper. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which yes. is shed for many for the remission of sins. Amen. Yes. Amen. How do we receive? How do we receive this remission through his blood? And secondly, why should we? Why should we? <clears throat> Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified yes. freely by his grace yes. through the redemption of his blood that is in Christ Jesus. Yes. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin, here's the main reason, 
Amen. For the wages of sin is death. Uh -huh. But the gift of God is eternal life. Yes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. Hebrews 9.22 Without the shedding of blood there is no Amen. redemption, remission, or forgiveness of sin. For remission of sins. Right. The shedding of blood. Right. But yet he tells us in Acts 2.38 be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? By the remission of sins. Yes. 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 The remission of sins. When we go down with him in baptism. Right. In his name. With his name. Right. That blood is applied to our heart. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Somehow. That's what that's the value of the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh. It's not the it's not the baptism. It's not the going into the water that re, that remits your sin. It said, when that magic name is called above you as you go under right. the water, right. yes. that name of Jesus Christ for the remission Amen. of your sins, because right. that is what is the remission of sins, is Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ right. yes. called over you. Amen. Right. For we are washed in our sins and reborn in him when we receive the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. First Corinthians 6, when you are washed, you are sanctified. But you are justified yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. and by the Spirit of our God. Think about this. You ever thought about why we anoint with oil? Why do we anoint it with oil? It goes back to the to the days of Egypt. Remember when the, the angel of death came over and they had the they had the doorpost anointed with oil, with, with, with blood. And the angel said, I will, if I see the if I see the blood on the doorpost. I will pass over you. Yes. Laman Aradam Amaru Ankamu. That's Arabic. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's what they that's what he said. Amen. Blood on the doorpost. Besides, besides that blood, as they moved along, Moses anointed the tabernacle with oil. We anoint with oil today. The kings of the old when they were anointed by the by the prophets. They were anointed with oil. Right. What happens is that, let me read the scripture first, James 5, 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yes, yes. yes. What it is, is that the anointing of the, 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 the application of the oil, it is, it is a reapplying of the blood of Jesus yes. to yes. you. Amen. Amen. It's, it's that blood on the doorpost. Yes. Protection. Yes. Yes. Is that is that that oil? I know it's just vegetable. You said, but it is symbolic of the blood right. of Jesus Christ. Yes. As it is yes. applied to your heart and to your healing, whatever the case may be. Right. We're born as a new spirit, as a new creature. Yes. With this spirit. Let me take some of my experiences with blood. You know, about uh, let's see, about twelve years ago now. I heard you know, some words that went with my name that I thought I would never hear. When I heard it, when I had a doctor tell me, Mr. Downing, it's cancer. It's cancer. He said, it's a form of leukemia. It's a blood disease. And we need to have you sent to, we need to send you to MD Anderson for our treatment and for our chemotherapy and things like this. And so we went. But I can I can remember leaving that doctor's office with Shirley. And we were just kind of in a stunned silence. Never heard that word before. Cancer. Yes. I came to tell you what, it would catch your attention in an instant. Oh yes. yes. The doctor looks you right yes. between the eyes of his son and yes. daughter. It's cancer. Yes, sir. We need to do something and we need to do it now. And yes. so I went. So anyway, to make a long story short, but maybe too late. But anyway, I went to make a long story short. I went through the, I went to MD Anderson and began these cancer treatments and chemotherapy and shots and things like this. What what leukemia is is a is a drop in the white cell count, severe drop in the white cell count. Right. And what the white cells do is fight infection. Right. Yes. It keeps keeps the you know any kind of diseases around you away from you. And then also a drop in the red cell count. The red cell count is, is it, it doesn't transmit the oxygen and iron like it should, and so you get extremely weak. Yes. Okay. So there for, for several weeks uh, and months, I, 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 can, I can tell you how weak I was. I know we've had people who've had, who've had COVID, they've talked about being really weak, 
You multiply that by about 10, and that's how weak you are when you have leukemia. And and I would go through these treatments, you know, and it took one. Uh, they were excited, to say the least. And, uh, but the thing was, many times we went to the MDA or something, and I'd be so weak, I could barely walk. He'd say, Mr. Downing, the doctor would say, Mr. Downing, I think we need to give you a couple of units of blood to, to, to put some, get some rel red cells back into your system. So we would do, and I would, I would do that. And, and I don't know if you've ever received blood. If you, you can give blood, blood pretty quickly. You know, it's right. a few minutes when you give blood. But to receive blood takes a long time, four or five, three or four hours. Yes. Long time. There's many times we and Shirley and I left MD Anderson at one o'clock in the morning, you know, late, been there all day long with treatments, et cetera, like that. But anyway, I would start receiving this blood and it was like there was strength pouring into my body. Uh -huh. yes. I would be so weak when we walked in and when we left at one o'clock, I was bouncing out the door and said, let's go eat, I'm starving. <laughs> yes. That's what that's what yes. new blood does Amen. to you. You know, Kate and, and it was it was not until as far as having a, a you know constant strength, it wasn't until the disease was completely wow. defeated that I was kind of you know back to normal. Anyway. You know what I what I what I am proposing today, or not proposing, but suggesting today is sometimes it's easy for us to suffer from spiritual leukemia. We receive the Holy Ghost and we receive the baptism. We're baptized in his spiritual blood, that life-giving spirit that he gives to us is into our bodies. And we feel that, that newness of life that he tells about when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But somehow, somehow the, the, the world that we get involved with begins to attack our spiritual white cells. And we have difficulty rejecting the effects of the world, uh -huh. okay? Sometimes it affects yeah. our spiritual red cells and we have difficulty having the strength that we need to fight against all the yeah. things of yeah. the world. Amen. And, and what happens is we become weaker and weaker and what happens, we come, to, occasionally we come to church so we come to church, it's like, a, it's like a blood transfusion. Right. You come to church and you suddenly you feel the Spirit of God again. Right. And you think, oh, oh, this is what I've been missing. Right. And you and you walk out of the church saying, going to do better, going to do better. Yes. Going to do better. Yes. But then, but then, just like just like the doctor told me, he said, I, I'm going to give you this. I had several transfusions. And what would happen would be I, I, I would bounce out of that hospital but it lasted about three or four days, mm -hmm. and I'll be right back to where I was before. Yeah. That's the way it is sometimes with us in church. Uh, yes. If we allow, yes. Our, yes. If we oh. allow the, the things of the world oh, right. to, to come in, and we, we come back to church, and we're all renewed, and we're fresh, refreshed. Yes. 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 And then we walk out, and suddenly the it all comes back. Yes. And we're, we're good for yes. three or four days. We're, we're reading our Bible, and we're just thinking about church, but then business and life and problems and bills. Yes. And next thing you know, we're back to our weakness again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that spiritual leukemia begins to begins to take its toll. Wow. That's wow. Good, brother. What we need to do yeah. is sooner or later we realize that we have this spiritual leukemia. It's just like wow. I did when I went to that doctor and I said, "Cure me, whatever I need to do, cure me." I didn't tell him that, but I went to see him and he knew that's right. Yes. I, was, I wasn't there for advice. Yes. I was there for whatever it takes. Yes. Let's get this done. Yes. Let's get this yes. done. And you know, I think that's what sometimes we reach that point in our spiritual life with that spiritual leukemia. We're going to have to come back to church or we're going to have to get face to face with God, right. be at home, in your closet, here right. in the church house. Right. Somewhere we're yes. going to have to get with him, yes. with, our, with that master healer, face to face. Oh, yes. And say, Amen. whatever it takes, whatever cure me. Yes. Cure me. Yes. Make me clean again. Oh, yes. I want to be yes. clean again. Yes. I want to be clean again. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Give, us the, give us today the wisdom, the wisdom to recognize that we have a problem. You know, when, yes. I, when, I, when, I, see that, when I went to see that doctor way back in the beginning, 
you know, I, I thought it was just been just a regular checkup, but I didn't, I, I wasn't expecting much. Couldn't really expect too much. I knew I had a problem. A little, you know, it didn't feel quite right, you know, but when I realized what the problem was, I went to MD Anderson and I said, Dr. Ravandi Kashani, whatever it takes, get me done. Yes. Get me done. And sometimes we have to do the same thing with God. We are Amen. in and out. Yes. Back and forth. We're on fire today and nothing tomorrow. You know, I mean, we're, we, yes. we live in a roller coaster. Uh, yes. We live in a roller coaster. Well, I can tell you this. I can tell you this. True, true spiritual happiness happens when you're with Him every day. Amen. Every yes. day you feel his spirit. Yes. Every day you feel his touch. Yes. yes. Every day you look up yes. and when you wake oh. up, you, your eyes yes. you, you, see them, you say, thank God for another day. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Or when you go to bed at night. Yes. You go to bed at night and the lights go off and you're just obvious. You're in total darkness. You can say to yourself, this has been a good day. Yes. I have yes. felt his spirit. Yes. I have felt his touch in my life. Yes. I feel that, I, that I, I'm, yes. I'm in the, where I should be with him. Right. There's no greater peace, oh, no greater joy right. that comes in living for him. Not 99%, not 90%, but living him for him 110%, at least 100% anyway. Oh, yes. Giving your all to him. And if you do that, if yes. you do that, you can, you can, you can, if you do that, you can sing that song, I see a crimson stream of love. Yes! yes. It, will, it will mean something to you. Yes. It will mean something today. Amen. And you'll be able to say, today, no condemnation. No condemnation. Amen. Abides to turn away. My soul from his salvation, he's in my heart. Yes. I'm glad I can still see that crimson stream of love. Yes, yes. Take out that message. Oh, thank you.